Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Haunted Dolls and Curses video. Wow, I haven't done one of these in a while. In fact, I think it's been almost a year since my last go around. So I thought I would showcase this video here while I'm doing your Mysteries and Disappearances video. And then once I wrap up this playlist, then I'll probably start this one here involving curses. But this one has to do with a ledger that has some infamy associated with it. Apparently it was found bricked up in some kind of hidden wall and then the person that found it and subsequently the family, they in turn essentially had a large number of curses slash hauntings with it. So much so in fact they actually ended up donating it to another place that involves haunting so that way at least these items were no longer plaguing them. There's a lot of mystery though associated with this ledger as to why it has these characteristics or how it first started and so on but I'm going to try to present as much information as possible and then let's see if we can actually come up with any theories associated with that so in fact you're looking at a picture of it now it doesn't really have any kind of specific name instead it's known as the cursed ledger so let's go ahead and let's talk about all the info that I can present here and as always, I'd love to hear what your own thoughts and comments are on there too. So let's go ahead and let's start that here. So if you wanted to find out first when this ledger was found, it was sometime in the 1980s. Maybe it could have been in the early 1980s, maybe the late 1980s, who knows. But you have to go to an area called Brighton's East Street. And there was a building that was being demolished at the time. In fact, it was being demolished by a gentleman by the name of Tony Benovitz, and he was there, um, I guess, taking over that place, and he was going to create something new. Apparently, that place used to be a shop, and it used to be a jewelry store, no less. Well, somewhere there within that wall, one of those walls, there was a bricked-up area, and then somewhere inside, hidden within that bricked-up spot, was this ledger. It's almost like it was fortune that this ledger was found because because you can imagine uh, there could have been just one simple circumstance where the wrong let's say wall came down instead of another one and then this thing would have been lost in time but no they found this particular ledger hidden again deep within that wall and it turns out it was dated around 1915 if you could believe that so definitely it has some history associated with it the idea goes that once that person that father Tony Benevitz found it then he in turn uh, placed it within his home in fact this was around the time period of the late 1980s by this point and I believe and I was reading several articles but I believe this is correct the place that was being demolished was formerly known as the Shoreland Fuchs Shop so if someone knows more information on that or if I stand corrected then please post it in the comments below they took it home because apparently Tony thought it would have been just an interesting thing to keep right it's a relic in fact looking at the pictures here you can see it's a nice little piece of history. Here you have a situation where every single entry made for that jewelry store, like in terms of what type of orders were being placed or what was sold for that day. Who knows? Maybe there was even inventory associated with it, too. All of that was carefully placed within each page it's it's neat i've seen that kind of stuff on some of my ghost hunts every now and then when i run into some really old or derelict buildings like i remember there at the yoakum hospital long abandoned decades old um, i remember seeing some entries from like the 80s like it was crazy it was stuff involving phone numbers and addresses and names I guess of some patients that were there. And so reading this information here with this curse ledger, I can see why they took it home because it is fascinating stuff. Little did they know, though, that when they did so, they inadvertently brought some curses with them. Apparently, this thing brought over some spirits and these spirits started haunting their location, their home, in other words. In fact, here's some of the specific hauntings that started to occur right there. And in fact, that's when it more became known along the lines of a sinister book. One thing was this. There was now a group of images that started to appear or I'm sorry, voices that started to appear 
throughout the house. They were described as strange voices. And then on top of that, there was these ghostly apparitions that started to move about the house as well. No one knows again exactly who those ghosts were or who those voices were. But then things took to a whole other level whenever the family's carpet, of all things, the family's carpet started to have these strange images of people appearing within that family rug. How unsettling must that be? There you are just relaxing at home, maybe in the living room, and then all of a sudden you stare down into your rug, the fan, the let's say the living room rug, and then there's these images that are popping up from it. I'm trying to visualize how that would be. Like, did they pop up physically in 3D, let's say from the rug itself, or was it just a flat image, almost like looking into a mirror, something along those lines? That's what I think it was most likely, but these images were weird. They included groups of men, women, children, and then a soldier that was riding a horse. Baffling stuff, right? Like, why would this be coming from the ledger, coming from that jewelry store, now popping up within the rug itself? The family had no clue, but obviously they were being played by all of these things. In fact, they described it as if they were suffering from the spirit visitations. And then finally, one of these um, spirits, presumably that soldier with the horse, told them that they needed to do something very specific. They said that in December 1915, this would mark apparently the 100th anniversary associated with this ledger, this cursed ledger, that they in turn must return it to Brighton, which was the place that it originated from. I forgot to mention too that when the family took the ledger home, they took it to a place called Maidstone, Kent, which is about 65 miles away. So in this case, it went far, far away from its point of origination. This spirit again told them that they must take it back or else like something bad would happen. They had up until December of that year, 2015, to be able to do something. So the family, in turn, looked for some information around. They found a location called Preston Manor, which is apparently one of the most haunted locations within that area. And so they called it up, and the person that answered stated, this was a, a lady by the name of Paula Wrightson, that they heard through the phone conversation how petrified the family was. Like at first, they were probably not taking it seriously, but then afterwards, just hearing about the experiences and then hearing the inflection of their voices, they wanted that book to be left there. If you're wondering why, again, that place there that's called the Preston Manor is one of the most haunted places in that whole area. So the, I'm guessing the idea is put it there along with a bunch of other hauntings, and then that way, that specific spot will hold yet another ghost or another set of curses, whatever is the case, and then it will leave the family alone. So put it somewhere where it's made for that kind of stuff as opposed to the house uh, that the family lives in. And so they left it there. And if you wanted to go check it out, apparently it's still there. It's still there. That ledger, that cursed ledger is still there to this day. And you can go there and you can see it in person. I don't know exactly if it's something that you can hold necessarily, but apparently there's things that were already happening. In fact, that same lady stated it sat on her desk for a couple of weeks but then after that, there was a spiritual medium that was there at that specific spot, apparently for some event that was happening. And when that occurred, she said immediately that that book had, quote unquote, bad things emanating from it. So it's still there to this day, again, at Preston Manor. And again, so much mystery tied to that ledger. Like, why is cursed? The closest thing I can think of is this. All those entries were made by people or specifically about people, again, either buying or selling jewelry associated with that jewelry store. My guess is that some of those people were big fans of that store. Like, in other words, they loved going there. Maybe it was something that they went to on an annual basis, if not more. And they did a lot of transactions there. And then when they ended up passing away, it was almost like their ghosts or their spirits decided to stick around. Like, they almost formed an attachment to that jewelry store in turn inadvertently by having their names marked within that ledger. You kind of hear that sometimes with cursed objects, how 
Sometimes those items become a link to the person that is that was originally creating it or causing that curse. And then that's why they in turn hang, hang on essentially like an anchor of sorts right there with that item. So that's my best guess. But unfortunately, there's not too much info again as to why. But it is interesting that it was found holed up, walled up within a hidden area within that shop. Why would somebody go through all that trouble? Why? Why not just put it into a cabinet? Why not just put it out in the open? You would never hear something like that unless it had something very valuable, let's say gold or jewelry or money. But no, it was just an ordinary ledger with regular pages on it, but it was mysteriously locked up. So maybe it already was affecting whoever was there at the jewelry store from before. But let me know what you guys think. Post those comments below. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.